Hey everyone, what's up? It's Flakes. Welcome to Stalkraft. Stalkraft is an MMORPG based on the beloved Stalker horror games. This game started out as a Minecraft mod, hence why it's got Minecraft graphics and the craft in its name. Right, so in this video I'm going to show you guys how to get started in this game and teach you guys a lot of the basics, so let's jump right into it. By the way, if you guys are stuck on this part of the tutorial, right after killing the guys with the sniper on the roof, you have to come up to this body and loot everything. You have to loot everything and then you need to equip everything. So equip the AK, the pistol and the knife. So you need to equip all of this so you can press the elevator button. A lot of people get stuck on this because they don't realize they need to equip every single piece of gear. Something very important that I forgot mentioning when looting anything, whether it be a box or loot from an event or someone's body, once you open it, if you press X, it says at the bottom, take all. If you press X, it loots everything straight away, which is extremely uh, time-saving and very efficient. So after you get betrayed at the end of the tutorial and watch the cutscenes, um, you're presented with your faction selection. There's two factions, stalkers and bandits. So they're pretty much... Uh, the same I mean you could call team blue and team red it's mostly the same apart from some weapons that you'll receive throughout the quest line and uh, some some different quests but uh, mainly the difference is the areas of the map you'll be playing in uh, the stalkers are mostly divided on the east side of the map and the bandits on the west side and um, so at the, in the end game, you're going to have two more uh, factions uh, for each of their available to each, um, each faction, like sub-factions, I guess you could call them. So I'm going to go ahead and, and start on a bandit. So I've heard that bandits have easier routes around the map and that it's easier for, for, for beginners. So... But Stalkers um, are kind of like the, the OG, you know, because especially the game's called Stalker. Uh, I mean, like, Stalker, it's based on Stalker, right? But they, just keep in mind that it's basically the same. You probably could, you could go through the both characters very easily doing the main quest on both characters, like, very quick. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and start Bandit. And I will also be showing the um, the stalkers as well. Like I won't be do doing just bandit content. I'll be doing both. As you can see here, I'm just clicking through everything. A lot of the times when you're dialoguing with NPCs, sometimes you're presented with two with two choices that can lead to different um, rewards or different outcomes. So be sure to be to to be careful what you're selecting. Alright, so after you go through the conversation with Lyndon, it's going to prompt you to open your PDA and go to your tasks. So after you do that, you're going to go ahead and do the the, the quest that it gives you. Alright, when coming close to this, this quest, you're going to bear in mind there's going to be your first anomaly called the, the Vortex. And... If you use a bolt, you can see uh, see where they are. As you can see, there's a vortex right there, and you can see like the wind. So if you get caught in that area, it's gonna suck you in. And then there's also gonna be a vortex right there, and you can mainly see them, right? And you can walk in between them. Oh, there's an artifact. Artifacts spawn after every emission as well, so bear in mind, and you could sell them for good money. So you can basically see that there's like one, two, three, four, five vortexes here, and you can walk in the area where they aren't um, sucking. So you see, I just walk through there, and there's no vortex here. I can walk through there. But yeah, you can visualize that they're there. So, And then you can also probably look. There's a little space here. You can walk in between them. But if you do get caught in them, all you have to do is just keep sprinting out of it. I'll show you guys for an example. So if I am sprinting and I get caught into it, you just want to keep holding W, you see? But if you stay in it too long, it will end up killing you. This electricity one's pretty straightforward. You just want to throw a bolt at it and quickly run through it before it resets. As you see, it resets very fast, so you want to run right through it. And as you can 
see the game is explaining that this is an emission. When an emission starts, you make you want to make sure you're either underground or inside. Some buildings aren't very good for it, but uh, most buildings will suffice. And if you're not, the emission will kill you. And after the emission, look, it spawns an artifact, as you can see. So I'm going to throw a bolt, pick up that artifact, work backwards a bit before it resets, throw another bolt, and then run right through it. Easy peasy. Coming out, you want to be careful with the, the vortexes once again. Walk through the area where there's no vortex, you can see it by the, the wind. You want to avoid this little AOE and walk, walk, walk right out. So as you can see, each safe zone has their set of NPCs. So there's the mechanic, the merchant of supplies, the researcher, the fence, and the merchant of gear. So once you get the... After you get your artifact, you want to you wanna research it for this quest. So you're going to want to go over to the researcher, where you can see his little symbol on the map. And you're going to talk to him. And you're going to want to research the, the artifact, which is this crystal. And you want to just drag it in here, press research, and then take it out again. Then you want to go up to the fence and just sell it. The game teaches you this, but a lot of people get caught up that they don't know uh, how to research the artifact. So that's how you do it. Then you want to go up, go up over here. The merchant, you just, you're going to want to talk to him and he's going to give you a gun. So after you can close out of that and he's given you this gun. So now you're going to want to go up to the, um, the repairman or the mechanic and just fix up the gun that, uh, that you just got given right there press repair and then take it back out and equip it then you're gonna want to talk to him again and he's gonna give you a muzzle brake you right click go to modification and equip the muzzle brake And yeah, that's pretty much how you get through that that um, little beginner part. After you speak with Lyndon again, it's going to prompt you to open your inventory and press personal storage. So this is basically your stash and anything you put in here, you will not lose it. And you can access this in all the different safe zones. Now you get all these side quests and the main quests. I genuinely uh, think everyone should do side quests. I think it's a, a lot more complete experience and I think it's more entertaining and I think you guys will enjoy the game more if you guys do the, the side quests. You can rush the main quest. The main quest will give you gear that you need, um, the, the, the end game gear. So if you rush the main quest, it will give you end game gear that you can go and then farm end, ga end game zones so so yeah but i definitely recommend doing the side quests i think it's um i don't know i, I think it's like incomplete uh not doing them so so yeah once again i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna run around and show you the guys the the different npcs so you have the mechanic you use the mechanic to to repair armor and weapons and also to upgrade them um, you have the bartender, which will sell ammo, meds, and armor. Armor plates. Then you have the researcher, which you use to research artifacts. So if you find an artifact, I suggest that you only research the artifacts that you plan on using for yourself. Because if, you, if you're planning on selling them, then you should sell them straight to the fence without researching them because it gives you more money. So... And then you sell them to the fence. All the materials that you farm, like all this material you get here from the, from farming animals, you should sell directly to the fence. You won't need them for anything. And then you have the, um, the gun, the gun merchant. So here you can get, uh, you can upgrade all your armors. I mean, craft new armors. And as you can see, it needs to craft this suit. You need the one before it, and swamp stones and green molds. 
And as you can see, you can use this one to get the scout or straight up get it with only roots and seeds. So I'm going to quickly explain where you get all of these. So, because it might be a bit too, you, you won't understand. So the mold you get from killing mutants. So all the boars, the boars and animals, all those, the fleshes and all that. And then the swamp stones, you get it from the NPCs, the AI. Well, not the NPCs, the AI, more like. So as you see, it says from people. And then the seeds, the seeds and the roots, you get them in the next part of the map area. And it's the same thing. So mutants and people, you see? So there's always two different things. So you'll have, I turned them off, but you'll have all these event waypoints on your map when you go outside. Like all these, look, boar hideout. And this will give you mold. And then further down, if you keep going further down, you'll find, um, uh, you'll find stalker camps. Or if you're on the other team, bandit camps uh, that will give you swamp stones. So I'm going to go ahead over there and show you guys. Alright, as you can see, we're coming here on a boar hideout and there's a stalker camp over there. So at that stalker camp, look, you can get swamp stones. And it shows two materials. One's a swamp stone and the other one's basically a, a stone that you can turn into 20 swamp stones. And the same thing here. It's mold and then something you can turn into 20 mold. So quickly we're going to go over here and kill some boars. Show you guys what type of rewards you're going to get. They're fairly easy. You should not have too many problems doing this. You can go through with your knife. So after you kill them, you can loot up the boars and you get all, the, all this loot. So... As you can see, it says can be sold to a fence. That's probably you should just sell it. And here, this is the material. So if you die, this green mold here will turn into a lost bag. And all the others, uh, your enemies can just loot them. So so um, if someone kills me, they're going to be able to take all the stuff that they can sell to a fence and sell it themselves. But they won't be able to use my materials or sell my materials, the crafting materials. They'll be, it'll turn into a lost bag and then they can auction the lost bag here. And then you have a little section called my backpacks where people will usually put up your lost bag. So, um, and if you need money, I suggest you your, your, your base. So either further down the road at Photon, I suggest just farming around in this area here. And it's not venturing over to this side, to the east side. So I suggest just farming in this area. And here I suggest farming just in this north area and not going down here. Um, just because you won't go uh, like that, you won't run into any of the focus action. And then ob obviously the, um, the same thing goes if you're playing as a stalker. You want to stay more down this area and not go too far up. That is if you're just trying to make money. So... Right now, I could uh, head back with just this and go go sell, which I will show you guys. I'm going to clear out these two more um, dog dens. As you can see, there's a trampoline right there. It has like a little pulsing. It'll just shoot you in the air like that. So you want to be careful with that as it can hurt sometimes, especially if you're low HP. But yeah, as you can see, it's fairly easy to just to... Uh, to clear out uh, all the animals. And remember to keep healing. And on the right hand side of your screen it says how many mobs are left in that um, area. So there's two enemies remaining. There's one. And there's the, the last one. Right, so now with all the 
with all this farming, you just head back. Once you're back, you can put the green mold in your stash because that's going to be a crafting material you're going to need. And you can sell all the rest to the fence. And as you see, we just made a thousand real walls, which isn't much, but in the start, if you're dying a lot to the stalkers or the AI, then that will be a lot. And the, um, the further you go into the game, the different areas, the more loot you'll get by completing these these beasts, um, these like uh, little events. And then you can come over and buy some more meds. So as you can see, money does go fast. Right there, basically used up all the money I made. So, oops, I bought the wrong money type, or the wrong ammo type. I thought I had an AK for a sec. But yeah, as you can see, money does go fast. And um, if you just keep farming and then you come back with a full bag, you can easily make a lot of money. But yeah, I suggest doing all those side quests and the quests and the main quests. Uh, but if you do get bullied a lot by other players, then that's a little way to make money so you can still buy stuff you need. Um, and you just progress to the next areas and it's pretty much the same thing. Once you get to the bar though, the best way to make money is doing the proto electro events or using um, or closing rifts with a computer. But we'll get into that into another video. For now, I just want to keep things simple for you, for you guys that are beginning. As for weapons, I think everyone should use what they would like to use, but the most meta weapons are guns uh, like the RPD, so the AKM, the 7.62. So you will get, you will get, um, as a bandit, you'll get an RPD from the quest line, the side quest, and as a stalker, you guys will get an AS Val, which is also pretty meta. So. The AS Val is also good, but the G3A1 is a really good gun to go for as well in the start. It's only got 20 bullets, but it's really, really strong. And But if you guys do want to go for the other guns, I'm like, I think you should. I've seen people using the Vityaz as well. The M4. But um, if you guys want a solid gun just uh, to go questing, then just follow the quest lines and it'll give you guns and... And um, I wouldn't bother too much about crafting. But um, if you guys do want uh, like the RPK for example, then yeah, you'll have to craft it because you don't get it from the quest line. It's all up to what you guys want. And then as for armor, you'll also get armors from the quest line. So I wouldn't grind too much for, for armors. You, the one armor that you're going to have to craft, I think, is this one. Which is fairly easy, easy once you get into a photon. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry too much about that. Snipers, um, the Mosins are alright. The I mean, most of them for PvP in the start they do one shot because they don't have armor. But once they start people getting armor, they don't. Uh, they they start to not one shot, but they leave you really one HP. So it's very strong still. And the semi-auto snipers are also very strong. So it's all what type of gameplay you want you guys want to use and you guys can always farm everything again if it doesn't uh, if it's not what you expect backpacks you're going to have to craft um, maybe a bag or two in the start to carry more stuff which is fairly easy to craft look the 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 mold and the swamp stones and in photon some seeds and roots I recommend getting this so you can grab as much stuff you can and then you have the the muzzles, the silencers, each does its own. And if you don't know if it goes on your gun or not, you press this little question mark and it shows if it goes on your gun, which guns it goes on. Then you have the, um, the sights over here. So this is a Mosin sight, an SVD sight. And it doesn't say the Mosin, but if you press on the view info, it says, look, Mosin carbine, Mosin rifle. So, if, for example, if I wanted to put this scope on on an AK, which doesn't have a rail or anything, then you'd have to go to other attachments. Or is it? No, it's uh, handguards and brackets, and you'd have to craft this handguard, for example, which, look, it's got a rail on top, and it's also, you can also put a grip on it. 
and as you can see that goes on the AKS and then further down for the bit for the AKM you have more uh, hand guards and as you can see they keep getting more expensive and better and also um, when you click on something like the for example the AKS right always make sure to look at the top where it says offers because a lot of these guns they don't have only one offer right a lot of them have more than uh, more than one offer so for example the AKS you see that it will use the old AK plus seeds and roots right but maybe you didn't craft this old AK right and you got to photon 2 on the other side of the map and you're like oh shit I didn't create craft the AKS which is in the in the beginner area so you check the other offers and look see you can buy the AKS straight away for roots and seeds only without having to worry about crafting the AKS in the beginner area going back to the farming so these events that we were just farming if you just go around doing them all they keep respawning so you don't need to venture too far away they just keep respawning once you do all the all these um like this flesh hideout, I'll go over there and do it and then it'll just respawn closer to base and you just keep in this select area to keep farming and it's worth noting that you should um, that you should farm, like before going to the next stage you should farm up a bit just in case you need uh, any of those materials so you put them in the stash like the swamp stone and the, the mold so you don't have to come back and farm it again so you just farm a little bit and just uh, put it in your stash but, um, yeah, I think if you guys just stick to the quest, the quest should give you everything you need. And then all the other stuff, if you want to craft it out, then go for it. I think the game is super fun. And especially if you're doing all the content that it has, the game has a lot to offer. And I'll be doing a lot more videos on explaining more in-game um, activities and stuff like that. In the case you do die... In the start of the game, you have a lot of these items that have a little lock symbol, which means you won't lose them when you die. But in the case you do die and you do don't have any of these locked items, I recommend buying maybe five to ten to ten heals. So that'll cost. Uh, let me see. So ten heals. There you go, five hundred rubles and maybe. If you're using 9 mil, I'd go for like 600 ammo, so 1,100 rubles. So that's more like how much I made, I made in the in that farming run. And then I'd always go for this composite plate, depending. Uh, so in every area you go, whether it's the bar, photon, this is the plate I'd go for. But you also need a plate carrier that can take plates to use it. And there you go. That's like a little loadout made in. And if you have stuff that you can put away, then you just put it away to use it next time. I recommend just like uh, going through the story with this. Um, you can just until it gives you better weapons and stuff. There's no point really grinding it out unless you really. I mean, like if you really want, you can just play. You can craft the Mose, and if you want to try it out, I recommend trying out different guns. See what you guys like. And a lot of the guns you don't even need to farm. For example, the Mosin, you can just straight up buy it from Rubles, 1.4k Rubles, or the SVT, or the SKS, and the AK as well. But once you want to upgrade them, you need the mold and the swamp stones. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This was my little intro to the game and basics, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, consider leaving a like and subscribe if you guys enjoyed, and to know when I drop my next video. I'm going to be making a lot of content on this game, as I think this game has a lot of potential, and I think it's very fun and addicting. The MMORPGs usually are very fun to play with friends, and even alone, this game is really playable alone and i definitely recommend it so i hope this video uh, helped you guys also be sure to check out my twitch i'm live almost every single day i'm probably live after posting this video so it would help a lot if you guys would check out my twitch and drop me a follow and who knows maybe you might even enjoy my stream so i'll catch you guys on twitch or in the next video i hope you guys enjoyed and i'll catch you in the next one peace